Morning guys, uh, it is Christmas Eve 2021, uh, 2021 is almost over as you guys are aware. Uh, today we are going to be doing a uh, 20 pound Wagyu Snake, Rib Snake River Farms brisket on the Komodo Komodo. Um, I've got it heating up, uh, I just didn't want to bore you with the bedding of the charcoal and all that. So I've already got my racks installed, my heat diffusers in place, all I did was I went 90% lump charcoal and 10% briquettes uh, just to give it a little bit more longevity while we're cooking since this is probably going to be a 12 to 15 hour cook I imagine but who knows we're going to be using the meter today to monitor it from our phone uh, we're going to wrap the brisket about 165 and put it back on the smoker I'm going to bring you guys to the kitchen <clears throat> when we wrap it because we're going to be doing something special today and I want to show you guys a new uh, uh, trick and tip so basically what we've got going on right now is even though my temperature as you can see is right at about 90 degrees on the smoker um, when you first light your smoker uh, these briquettes really need to smolder we just use the little wax cubes like we always do I put three down in the charcoal bed lit them let them flame up for a little bit and then I put all my accessories in there and shut the lid uh, and the reason we're doing that is because I want it to naturally bring this up to temperature but you don't want to put your food on there until the smoke clears out. Right now it's just the charcoal getting hot, everything's getting hot. So 30, 45 minutes. In the meantime, what you do is you go to your kitchen, take your brisket out, put your meter probe in, and let it sit for about 45 minutes and bring it up to uh, at least decent ambient temperature. Get it out of the refrigerator and let it start warming up. So we're shooting for 225 today, um, but from experience on this smoker, I know it's really hard to maintain 225. So realistically, our temperature is probably going to be between 250 and 300 is what I imagine. But basically, all we're doing right now is waiting for the uh, uh, vortex of terror to calm down and the, the temperature to stabilize. And then we're going to throw the brisket on. We'll be back in a few minutes. All right, guys. So she's been warming up now for about... 20 ish minutes you can see it's coming up slowly that's how I like to do this grill smoker I don't like uh, you don't want to bring it up fast and then try to throttle down that never works so as you can see I've got my uh, my vent open about three quarters of a turn and my intakes you can see about what position I've got those on that shouldn't once this takes off once this charcoal takes off um, it should uh, it's probably going to level out around 250 is what I'm guessing, somewhere between 250 and 300. As the cook goes on, I'll be able to manage the fire a little bit better, more consistent. Um, but it should, the best time, honestly, to try to prevent, perfect uh, fire management on this smoker is when you first buy it and you're doing the burn-in. Just play around with it. Don't cook anything yet. Just play around with it and, uh, um, you know, kind of figure out what temperature you're going to cook your foods at and try to figure out what your intakes need to be in and what your vent needs to be in uh what positions and uh that's that's all i did and uh you know it's it's still not i don't have it perfected yet but i've got it pretty darn close so we're going to be back here shortly to put the brisket on we're just waiting on the grates and everything else to get stabilized and heat up and we're going to be cooking here in no time stay tuned okay we're ready to put our brisket on as you guys can see we're going to cook fat cap up this time as you guys have probably seen from my previous videos i did one that way one time and i was not happy with the results so we're going to give it another shot why not so fat cap's already facing up uh meter probe is in it and we are going on to the smoker when you put one on here I always set it right in the middle and kind of just bunch everything up because the way you set it's the way it's going to cook. And we're going to shut her on down. Take this off so I don't do up my grill. And it's shut down. See, you lost a little bit of heat, but these Kamados, they will rise right back up. So don't stress. So now, at this point, kick back. Uh, do whatever you do, go on with your day. Um, just check in on this every now and then, spritz it about every hour. Uh, I recommend apple juice or pineapple juice uh, mixed 
uh, 80% fruit juice, 20% water, um, about every hour. You're gonna, after, leave it alone for the first hour. Don't even open this lid, just let it cook. Um, check on it after an hour, spritz it if it starts looking dry. If it's not looking dry at that point, let it go another 30, 45 minutes, then start your first spritz, and then an hour after that. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how long this thing's gonna cook. I'm gonna get linked into the meter. Uh, I'm assuming it's gonna be an all day cook, but we'll keep you posted every step of the way. We'll see you soon. All righty guys, uh, it's about 1230 and there's where our temperature is holding at. So see, that's what I mean about these Kamados. Um, if you, uh, once you kind of, there's my intakes. Once you uh, kind of dial them in and know what temperature to uh, to maintain, um, I mean, you, you got it down. Just a little, little bit of a trick to it, but nothing to it. So now is about the time in the cook. We're gonna come out, it's been a little over an hour. We've left it completely alone. We're gonna look at it for the first time after an hour and we're going to uh, spritz it if it needs it. There's my spritz bottle. It's already ready to go. Uh, and uh, kind of hard to hold the camera and do this at the same time. But we're gonna open it up and look at it. Ooh, she's looking pretty. Yeah, she's looking good. And plus, it's a good time for your fire to stoke a little, not stoke, but it's a good time for your fire to, to kind of get a little bit of oxygen to it. So, so you just want to lightly spritz it at this point, because see, it's still pretty wet. So you just want to, you don't want to start washing off your, uh, your rub. We work so hard on these briskets to, uh, to get that bark just right and see how you lose heat but that'll recover really quickly we work so hard to get that crusty bark on it you don't want to wash it off so now i'm gonna leave it alone i'm not gonna probably look at it for another hour and a half or so and the meter uh, it calculates your cook for you it says we've got about um i believe it said eight hours eight and a half hours so like i said it, it'll start getting a little bit closer the longer this cook goes um but it's 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 gonna be a long cut it's gonna take a little bit we may not even be able to eat this tonight we may just rest it i'll get up in the middle of the night and trim it put it in the fridge and then we'll warm it up for lunch tomorrow on christmas day uh other than that we'll see you guys in a little bit all right guys this is where the magic happens right here um show you how to wrap these this is what you're going to use brisket mop Okay, this is when you need to get as much flavor as you can on these briskets. So you don't have to use the whole bottle. Be careful because I don't want to mess up my wife's kitchen. Get her all mad at me. Remember what side. Okay, Amy, that'll have to come off. I gotta fold it. Perfect. Oh, oops. Just about, yeah, okay. Well, so what we normally do, I'm not gonna flip it though, because it's gonna make a mess. We're just gonna put in a little bit more. You, you just, once you put this on the smoker, it'll start to steam. But you want to do this kind of quick so you don't have a mess in here. Kind of pull the crease. There we go. And then you want to flip it and tuck it tight. All right. And I'll use there go. Oh, let me come over there. I'm sitting the best table to wrap a brisket. Okay, and I just flipped it so now it's meat side up. Flip it again, and we are fat cap up again. So, let me grab some scissors. And Amy, I'll clean the table, I promise. Cut it to fit. Okay. 
So for your thick part, there's my meter probe. Poke it in there good. See, there's a line on it right there. You gotta get it in the meat past that point. So I just stick it all the way like that. Um, okay, now it's back on the grill. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'll update you guys here in just a little bit. I'm gonna pop this back on the grill and go from there. Okay guys, so this is hour number seven. So this actually got done uh, in half the time that I figured it would. Um, so we've maintained about 300 degrees on this smoker, the whole cook. I'm not gonna fight it. I've got the vent now shut down about 95% and the intakes on the bottom are just barely open. Um, but anyways, I just probed it. Uh, it's been wrapped in butcher paper for quite a while. I'll go ahead and open it up and let you see it real quick. We'll make it quick so we don't have any flare-ups. There she is. Not much to see, it's wrapped in butcher paper. So uh, I, I came out here earlier to spin it because after you wrap it, about halfway through, you wanna spin it again to still make sure it's steaming and cooking evenly. This is the point you don't wanna leave it on too much longer. Like I said, we're right there at the 202, 203 mark. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it. I probed it, it's soft, tender, it's gonna be delicious. Um, when I moved it though, uh, some of the juice from the brisket, this has been one of the juiciest briskets I think I've ever cooked, and uh, it did have a little bit of a flare up. It was quite the scandal. But anyway, so we got that under control. It did spike the temperature a little bit, but we got it under control. We're gonna pull it, cover it in towels in the kitchen in a tray, let it continue cooking and cool down a little bit for a couple hours, then we're gonna slice into it. We'll see you guys in the kitchen. Okay guys, we're back in the kitchen. Um, as you know, and I got a piece right here ready to taste it. Uh, this thing ran so late into the night last night, we took it out, I let it uh, sit for two hours, and then uh, I went ahead and trimmed it, put it in a pan. You can do this, uh, it's gonna be just as good the next day. What you'll wanna do is, uh, as you see, I made my burn ends, and uh, all I did was just mix them with barbecue sauce, put them in a pan, put it back on the smoker for about 15, 20 minutes, Got that nice barbecue, tacky, smoky smell. Trimmed up my flat, and uh, we're gonna try it. Taste real quick. Mmm, just as tender as ever. Um. Also, last night I did try a piece. It was phenomenal. I'm telling you, it's just as good the next day. You put it in your oven to reheat it at uh, about 175 for about an hour and a half. Bring the temperature up really slow. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. Do this for your family. This would be a good cook. Uh, it would be very impressive. Again, this was a Snake River Farms 20-pound brisket smoked on the Komodo Komodo. Um, Merry Christmas, everybody. Like and subscribe our channel. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.